Well hi, I've put up a long video already on restoring a stained glass window but in this video I'm going to make it a far shorter condensed one. So if you want a quick overview on restoring a stained glass window I have a beautiful window here to restore and it's number five on my list this one so I've done four already. So you'll get to see where I've got to now on restoring windows and they're going pretty well so hope you enjoy this one. This is the window and it's quite a nice size as you can see and on the face of it it looks okay but actually as it often with stained glass windows this has got lots and lots of breaks they're about 19 breaks and just to point out a few all of these side little bits here bar three of them are cracked those are totally missing we've got big bits broken or missing so it's in a general bad way quite a lot of this red around the edge is broken as well but I'm lucky the important bits here are intact so it's not going to be too bad there's some difficult curved cuts to do here but otherwise it's fairly standard I've got to cut all of these essentially just as a batch and I'll completely redo those but it shouldn't be a bad little restoration we don't need many tools for stained glass restoration at least not on the sort of basis I'm doing it you need a glass cutter and I'd thoroughly recommend one of these oil filled glass cutters they're very reasonable so UK about £3.50 and uh, have a little oil reservoir in them that lubricates the cutter and it's great. The other key thing I'd say worth buying at the outset are what are called grozing plars. And can you see how they're a bit different in the jaw? They, they're very good for nibbling glass and for breaking bits of glass. And again, UK pounds, probably about eight pounds. So not expensive, but really well worth having. And then the other thing is for cutting your glass, I've got a cutting ruler so it's thicker on one edge so it's thicker on that edge than the other edge and it has a nice little grip base to it that really helps as the glass cutter can run along the side of it I then have a soldering iron which needs to be quite powerful this is 125 watt but you certainly need something in excess of 60 watts so I say 125 watt there, a brass wire brush for cleaning up the lead cane. So the brass is softer, it's not like a steel one. And then the other thing is a cutting board and this is a modeler's cutting board. So it's like a lino type material, but it's a self healing cutting thing. So that's useful. And then finally, I use a little marking knife, but I mean a little sharp knife for cutting bits of lead cane and for generally cleaning out debris from between gaps. So they're really the essentials. Glass-wise you'll find quite a few suppliers on the internet. It's fairly reasonable to buy as well. This came from a company called Lead and Light at Candom Lock. But you can, there are lots of companies, you can get it mail order. And um, I'm using sort of, it's, it's modern glass, but it's actually what's called cathedral rolled. So it's got a nice texture to it and it looks authentic with the old Victorian glass that I'm using. So I have tried quite hard to get good colour matches. And of course the other thing you'll need is some lead came and this is the lead which goes between the sort of sheets of glass and again it's not too expensive and you can get it from stained glass suppliers if you just google them on the internet you'll find plenty well some of my friends have been saying oh stained glass it's oh i can never cut glass and it's all difficult don't be put off as i say use an oil wheeled glass cutter and a nice thick edge rule. Get the smooth side of glass. So this glass is very ripply on one side and it's relatively smooth on the other. I'm getting the old glass fragment that I want to recut. Line it up with a ruler. I've lined up this glass on my grid cutting board as well, which is an additional, if you like, insurance to make sure that you get it sort of nicely lined up. And then I find the trick is to allow, always cut the glass about half a millimetre narrower than the bit you're replacing because the old lead is, gets a bit bent and it has bits of muck in it. So if you cut it a little bit shorter or narrower, I should say, it's not quite so bad. So I'm just now getting this little glass cutting wheel so that it just goes over the edge of the bit of glass there that I'm cutting. So I know that's about the right sort of width. So then remove your bits. And then with your glass cutter, use an even 
but firm downward pressure and go across the whole piece. So like that. I get that nice scoring sound. You get a little faint score line. Then if you've done it right, it breaks. And it really is <laughs> that easy if it's a straight line. It's more difficult on the curves. Well, I've cut my boundary pieces. This was actually the only piece of glass, oddly enough, I really couldn't get a decent colour match on because the original boundary glass has a slightly sea greeny look and it's very nice. But um, I couldn't get a match, so I've got this Florentine equivalent, which I got it in clear just so it doesn't clash colour wise. So I think that will look all right. For the top corner, I'm going to just have a look at there. For this top corner, I'm going to put in some of this yellowy glass. By the way, I've backed this with paper so that you can see roughly what sorts of colours, otherwise they don't really show up. And so I'll, I'm going to cut this out next. And what I do to mark it, I just lay it on top, slightly over the edge of the lead cane, and then with a felt pen, take a bit of an estimate as to where I think the cut line should be. And again, cut it slightly undersize, if anything. So there, I've just marked it lightly. And I'll, I'll now put my ruler, ruler along there and cut that piece. So I've lined my piece of yellow glass up on this grid to make sure I cut it as a right angle. I'm assuming the old square was a right angle. <laughs> we'll soon find out. And I'm just lining my little glass cutter wheel over where I did those felt tip marks. Yeah, I think I've got that roughly right. These glass cutters they're almost best if they're held higher up. So again, score it. Oops. Like that. And then break it. Like that. And I've cut again on the smooth side of the glass. So this glass is slightly rippled on one side. But I've cut on the smooth. So that's the first cut. I'll now mark it and do the second cut. So I've got again, same principle, lay it across, try and work out which way I had it. Yeah, so something like that. Maybe it's like that, I haven't got this, that's it, yeah. So again, I'm gonna mark this with my felt pen. If anything slightly undersized, this bit of lead <laughs> for this one is horribly bent. Something like that. So we'll cut that side next. So having marked it with felt pen, smooth side up, I'll line it up on my cutting board grids. And it's the same principle as before. Get my little ruler and cut on the felt tip marks. It's worth taking a bit of effort here to actually get it all lining up nicely with a nice firm even downward pressure. like that and then just snap it like that and that's a square cut yeah that looks fine so I'll be able to ease that in to the lead in a minute to fit the pane of glass you have to really take your time and the first sort of procedure is to scrape out all the sort of old plastery gunk. What they used to do, they used to make these windows up and then to make them waterproof, they'd fill them with a mixture of these things like chalk and far grate black. 
and turpentine and perhaps a bit of putty and it would make quite a good sort of gooey thing that you put on with a hog hair brush and work it in underneath the lead canes to make the window waterproof. Nowadays you can buy proprietary products for making them waterproof so you can get tubs of prepared filler although you can still mix up if you want to make your own you can mix up the chalk and turpentine and soot or far great back and it does a perfectly good job I have done it actually on an old window anyway clear it all out get all the little muck out you can't afford to have one little bit in the way because it will stop your bit of glass which is very straight actually fitting so you've got to go along the whole way and then the next thing using your grosing pliers very gently just lift the lead and this takes a few goes so you can't get it completely up well I don't think it's wise to try and get it up in one go just go along and try and sort of semi holding it in place but just raise its edge and the idea for doing that is once you've raised its edge you can drop the glass down into the gap below so I'm now just going along and I'm just using these pliers and I'm going along two, three times. So I don't lift the lead completely up straight in one go. I'm doing it in about three passes. Okay, once you've lifted the lead up, you'll find you can actually drop the piece of glass in. And then the next thing to do, and I do this just with a little knife, is fold the lead back over. <laughs> so again, take your time, no rush, just fold it over. Anyway, that piece is now in, so move on to the next bit. I'm now going to be doing this nasty curved bit, and this is far more tricky. I find the secret is to cut the square pieces, so I've now cut this bit of glass, same as before with the cutting, but roughly the square shape, and then with a felt pen, just go around the curves that you want to cut. So just get a nice little line going round that you can see. Like that. And then cut it freehand with a glass cutter. So that's one of them. Which I'll do first, I think. Let's just check that again. Check it's... It's always a method of measure twice and cut once. Yeah, that's fine. So I'll now... Oops. I'll now cut this curve. Now, cutting curves, unless you just so happen to have a glass compass or something, which I don't, you have to do it freehand. But it's the same principle. Take your time. I'm pressing firmly and I'm following that curve in one sweep. Yeah, so I've got a scored line. What you need to do now is fracture the glass and that's where the end of your glass cutter comes in. There, it actually broke off for me this time. What, that was a bit quick actually. What I normally tend to do, tap it underneath and you see a little fracture line appearing. You then snap it just as before. But anyway, that has come off, which is what I needed. So that's the first bit fair. So here's the other curve for this same piece and I've felt tipped my line, I've scored it, I now tap it. I'm just hitting underneath my score line and I think you can just see on camera that's gone darker. It's fractured at the moment along that bit hasn't quite fractured in that last bit. So 
it's fractured to about there at the moment. So this focus will go in and out a bit on this one. Let's try and get, get us on focus again and show you what I mean. So can you see that's a darker line, that's the fracturing. Okay, it's fractured now right round to there. Yeah. So that's our two quite complicated curves cut. But that's the principle of curve cutting. I said this is a shorter video, so I better stop there. Well, I've now got this panel of blue glass in. I've had to do a bit of nibbling, and when I nibble, what I do is I basically, if it's like a half a millimeter too wide, professionals use like a grass glass grinder, or they well, actually what they do is they cut it the right width in the first place. <laughs> but anyway, this one was about half a millimeter out. So what I had to do, I score it both sides of the glass half a millimeter in and then I just nibble it with my grozing pliers and it comes out a little bit shaggy but it won't notice underneath underneath the lead. So anyway, that bit's now being cut and it's a really tricky one with two curves but at least that's done. I'll fold the lead over now and that will be in. So quite pleased with that. Well it looks fairly sort of disaster zone-ish here at the moment but um, it will get better. Basically I'm having to replace each of these inner pieces here because they're all cracked. Now, I could let raise the lead on the corners as I have for these other pieces, but it's actually sometimes, particularly where I've got broken red pieces around the edge as well, it's easier just to cut through the lead and then it lets you open it out a bit more to get the replacement pieces stuffed in. So that's what I'm doing here. I've cut the lead. I'm going to then insert the pieces without having to lift as much lead. I'll probably only just have to lift little stretches and then I'll re-solder it back together. And that way it's a lot easier, a lot quicker. I should just say that I think if a professional was doing this window, they'd probably just re-lead it, because it's actually probably quicker to re-lead. But that's fine if you've got the sort of skill to do it all, and I'm doing this as a more of an emergency repair, rather than see this go in a skip, I want to restore this window and use it. So, you know, it's cutting your cloth accordingly. Anyway, that's the plan, so, I will now get these bits in. Another little tip, if you get a bit of, sort of cracked glass, which you don't want to have to replace, perhaps it's a very fancy piece of glass, as I've got on this one, a little bit of glass bond glue, if you just put it on the crack, it sort of semi-covers it, and it will also secure the piece of glass to stop it falling out, so worth doing. It may look a bit damaging when it has all the window in bits, but actually, you can see here, you see I've loosened that joint, and it's been enough for me to slide this clear piece of glass in. So it does work. I'm, at the moment I'm just cleaning up the joints now and I'm going to re-solder that to close it up. And I've done the same sort of thing here. I've had to actually cut a bit of lead out there to get a bit of glass in. But I can solder that in and pack it back in neatly and it will hold that one. This one, same sort of idea. I've had to just take out the corner there and slot it in, but it, it will make it go in. So suddenly you go from sort of having no bits of glass to, well, there are three more bits, you know, going in. So it begins to take shape quite well. Anyway, I will carry on and make steady progress. It does take quite a long time, though. Well, to actually solder a joint, one needs to apply a bit of flux, which just comes, becomes various forms, it usually is a little paste. So I'm just using a glass fragment to apply the flux to where I want to. Some of these joints, they're so loose, I'm actually filling in with little bits of lead. Sort of scrap lead just to fill in and then the solder will flow in. But anyway, if you apply the flux, as I say, I'm just using a standard soldering type flux. And then apply some, well, the hot iron to what you want to solder and feed in the solder, just sort of stuff it underneath the iron and it melts in and fills the joint quite nicely. I've now soldered up both sides of the window and there we are, all the bits of glass replaced. That's really nice to see it at this stage. I now just need to clean it up a bit and then get it into its wooden frame. I'm just mounting up the window into a wooden frame and in fact I've put a video on this channel on making the window frames for these windows. Anyway, um, just to quickly run through the mounting 
procedure, I'm using toughened glass, four millimeter toughened glass, which you have to get cut to size. Well, you have to order it and get it cut to size and then they toughen it. And it takes about a week, but it's actually not very much more expensive than standard glass. And it's just worth knowing because it is a lot, lot tougher. Anyway, I'm mounting the toughened glass into the wooden frame using general purpose silicon, just clear sealant, and that makes it nice and waterproof from the outside. I then put down a layer of draft excluder strip, so just a little foamy strip, which goes down on top of the glass, and then I put the stained glass on top of the draft excluder strip, and the reason for that, it sort of cushions it. And then, on top of the stained glass, and you can see it just around the edge here, particularly if I remove a bit of this framing, I'm putting this, again, it's draft strip material. I think they call it P-strip. It's the draft strip material that's shaped slightly ridged. So it's bubbly, it looks like letter P. In fact, yes, it is P-strip. So um, I'm using some P-strip as well. And then the wooden framing just sits on top of that P-strip and gently compresses it. So I'll screw this down and that will sandwich the glass, it supports it, it stops dirt getting behind it, and just generally sort of protects it very nicely. So there you are, just final bit to do now, just get the framing screwed on. Well, here's the finished window from the outside. So with the toughened glass on there. I'm very pleased actually with the way this one's turned out, and I hope you've enjoyed watching the progress as it's gone along. If I can help at all, just ask any questions below. And um, there's a bit more detail in my other video on glass cutting, etc., on the other glass video. And if you want to find out how I made the frames, that's also on this channel as well. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. And as I say, any comments, if I can help, just below.